Hi all and welcome back to the Australian Reptile Park. Jake here with another live stream and today, uh, very exciting, we're talking about another of our crocodilian species here at the park. We've met Elvis, saltwater croc, uh, but now we're gonna talk about uh, their American relatives, the American alligator. Now I'm standing in front of our large gator lagoon and in this lagoon we have approximately 30 adult uh, American alligators. Most of those are females like a couple that you see sitting on the grass behind me here and then we do also have a few very very large males. Now like all crocodilians there is what we call sexual dimorphism within the species which means the male gets far larger than the female. In this lagoon we do have males that are upwards of 400 kilos in weight and over 12 feet in length. Your average sized female um, is like the one over in the corner here and the one I've got sitting in front of me here as well. Uh, maybe between six and seven feet. This one's a little bit smaller than that. Um, and then a really big girl like we have here sitting on the bank, she might reach eight or nine feet in length, but they're only gonna get to about 150 kilos. There is a substantial size difference between the two. Now alligators are something that we've been working here uh, with at the park for a very, very long time. We were actually uh, one of the first places to import this species into the country way back in the late 1960s. Now we brought in a very large group the majority are still living in this lagoon here today and we've done a lot, a lot of work with breeding this species and we've supplied zoos right across the country with American alligators from the stock that we, uh, we have living in this lagoon. Now they're a beautiful animal, um, we're going to talk a little bit about breeding in just a moment, but what I thought we might start out with is some of the differences between an American alligator and a croc. Now people see a saltwater croc, of course they get very very large and they look like they have a huge head, but in comparison to an American alligator like we have sitting in front of me here, this is Rosie, and uh, Rosie is one of our more hand reared American alligators that we use for our public presentations here at the park. Uh, you can see on her head and on her snout as she comes towards the camera right on cue, um, she has a very broad rounded snout in comparison to a croc and uh, that's really got to do with what they're feeding on. An alligator wants to feed mostly on a smaller food item. Maybe a bird or a small mammal, uh, maybe a crustacean like a crab. A big croc like Elvis, uh, he's gonna be feeding on medium to large sized mammals. So their jaw is more designed for ripping and tearing and dragging things into the water. Whereas the broad rounded snout of an American alligator is uh, far more well suited uh, for crushing. So if they're feeding on things like a turtle or a crab, they can very easily crush through uh, that hard surface. Now, uh, Rosie here, she's been here at the reptile park her entire life. And uh, as you can see, um, she's not your average gator. She's been used in our public presentations, as I mentioned, and uh, she works alongside our presenter here at the park, Ranger Mick, who many of you, if you would have visited the park, you would have seen, and I'm sure many of you would have seen Rosie as well. She is one of the more famous residents here at the park. She's a beautiful girl, and uh, yeah, as I mentioned, she was born here. She's been her, here her entire life, and uh, she's a pleasure to work with. Now back to our lagoon over here, um, you can see it's a very large body of water and then we've got this bank that lines the back half of it. Now during the breeding season, which starts uh, in about October, the males, the five or so males that are in here, and the females, they'll get together and they'll mate. Now uh, they go through the process and of course the females will become what we call gravid, which basically is the uh, reptilian equivalent of being pregnant, and they will begin to develop eggs. Now, what they do, once they've got eggs developing inside them, they go up onto the bank and then they'll make a nest, which is something that all crocodilians have in common. They build a nest in which to deposit their eggs. Now, in alligators, um, they basically build what we call, oh, it is a nest, we call it a nest, but it's basically just a, a big mound of uh, sticks and leaves and rotting debris. If we come over here, you can actually see an old uh, nest that's sitting here, still in that mounded shape, but. Um, it's lost most of the material. When it's a nice fresh nest that the female has just made, it's really well covered up. It's got uh, tons of leaves on it, um, all sorts of debris. And basically what that's gonna do is act as a chamber or a place that those eggs can sit in whilst they're incubating and they're protected. The female will sit near the nest and protect it vigorously. Um, but of course the temperature within the nest is what's gonna uh, cook or incubate uh, those eggs throughout their incubation period. So it assists in uh, hatching those little gators out. Now we've actually got an old egg here, which I can show you. You can see um, a very nice white egg. Uh, this is quite typical of what most crocodilian eggs look like. 
and uh, it's quite elongate, a little bit larger than a standard chicken egg. And when the egg is fertile, you can actually see quite a nice band running down the middle of the egg. And also you'll be able to get a torch and do what we call candling, where you put the torch to the egg. And once that embryo has started to develop within the egg, you'll begin to see veins form inside. That is a good sign that your embryo is developing well inside the egg. Now the incubation period for an American alligator is between 60 and 65 days. And after that, uh, your baby alligator is gonna break through that egg. They've got a tiny little egg tooth, which they'll develop on the end of their snout. They'll crack that egg and then they break out of it. Now we don't have any brand new alligators here to show you, but we do have one that's uh, just a yearling, one year old. So I'll pop the egg down and we can have a look at him here. Very cute little dude. You might try and bite me. I'm not sure. <laughs> this is uh, one of our young juvenile American alligators. This is uh, a little bit bigger than when they start out, but still, as you can see, quite small. He's only about uh, 12 or 14 inches in length. And when they're young like this, they're quite vividly colored. They get this nice yellow and, and cream that runs through them. And then as they get a little bit older, if you look back at Rosie there, you'll see she's lost a lot of that coloration, uh, particularly along the back and the tail, which you see quite nicely um, on these juveniles. Now, perfect miniatures of the adults, and even at this size, um, they're a mini miniature predator. Um, they're more than capable of taking down uh, small insects, potentially even uh, tiny little mammals as well that they might come across. Um, and certainly, uh, once they get a little larger, they may even be able to feed on other alligators. And in fact, there is some fantastic images uh, on the internet of large alligators feeding on smaller ones. It's all part of the, uh, the ecosystem, the environment, it happens. Um, and small alligators can certainly be taken up in the food chain by any number of predators as well. So when they're this size, they're typically spending a lot of their time hiding away. They'll be in the reeds, in amongst vegetation. Uh, they're doing their best to stay out of the way of larger alligators and also way out of the way of uh, any would-be predators like a snake, uh, a bird, pretty well anything could eat a small American alligator when it's just been born, when it's just hatched out. Are they top of the food chain in Florida? Uh, they are, yes, yeah. A large American alligator, there's really not much that's going to be able to, to mess with it. Um, in saying that though, um, there is a large invasive predator that's become a part of the, uh, the southern Florida ecosystem and that is the Burmese python. Um, alligators will eat Burmese pythons, but Burmese pythons are certainly capable of consuming small alligators. So when they're small, as I mentioned, there's plenty of things that could feed on them, including uh, invasive predators. But once they get a bit of size on them, um, it is very hard for anything to, to really touch them. They're pretty, um, they're pretty well top of that food chain. Are alligators only found in America? Uh, they're not. There's two species. This one is the American alligator and the one that you'll typically see um, in captivity is the American alligator. That's Alligator Mississippiensis. They have a fantastic scientific name. Um, but there is another species found over in China. It's known as the Chinese alligator. And that species, unfortunately, is critically endangered. They also stay much smaller. Even a large adult male is only going to get to about five to six feet in length. So they're basically a, a small um, but far more endangered version of the American alligator. So there is two species. How many alligators do we have here at the Australian Reptile Park? Uh, here at the park currently we have uh, around 60 American alligators. We have what I would say is the largest collection uh, in the country. Certainly there would be places in the United States that have far larger collections than that. But as far as Australia goes, we uh, really are pretty well the stronghold uh, for American alligators. We have a lot of them and they've been uh, a big focus of ours over the decades. You mentioned the nests before. Do you let the eggs incubate inside the nests? We don't, know, and there's good reason for that. Um, I mentioned before the breeding season, it starts in about late October into November, just as we're coming into summer. And in fact, when the female American alligators are laying those eggs inside the nest, um, it's about the New Year's period, um, typically when we have some of our hottest days of the year. Um, so we actually have to remove the eggs um, in order to, for them to survive. If we were to leave them in there over our summer, which typically gets far warmer than where they're found, um, those eggs would simply cook inside the nest and they would not hatch. So if we do want to hatch alligator eggs, we have to take them out of the nest uh, manually. We restrain the female or we distract the female, we'll get her away from the nest because she is going to be quite protective. And then we'll place those eggs into an artificial incubator where we can closely control the, the temperature of those eggs so that they hatch.
How well can alligators see underwater? Uh, reasonably well. All crocodilians have what we call a nictitating membrane, um, which I may be able to show you here. He's just closed his eye, and if you look carefully as he opens it, um, they have basically a lens that runs across the eye. Um, it acts as a basically a pair of swimming goggles. There it goes. It's, it's peeling back now. And when they're under the water, they'll basically fold that over the eye and uh, yeah, it acts just like a pair of swimming goggles. So reasonably good vision. In saying that, um, when they're living in you know, dark brown water, um, they still do find it quite hard to see. So they will pop to the surface um, and they'll expose their eyes and their nostrils um, and their ears as well so they can hear, see and smell. But they're also incredibly sensitive all around the head on an alligator. I don't know if you can see there, just in front of my finger, they have these tiny black dots. Now those are highly uh, sensitive pressure receptors, which we call integumentary sense organs, and they enable all crocodilians to pick up on tiny vibrations in the water. So they, yes, they're using their eyes to see, but they're also highly sensitive um, to vibrations. What's bigger, crocodiles or alligators? Uh, for the most part, crocodiles. Um, there's quite a number of crocodiles found right throughout the world. Uh, the largest found right throughout the world is the saltwater crocodile, like Elvis, that we have here in Australia and throughout much of Southeast Asia. Um, they can get up to about the 20 foot mark, potentially. That's about the largest specimen ever recorded. A big male gator, uh, he's going to be getting to about 12, maybe 13 foot. So there is a bit of a size difference between the two, but in saying that, alligators are very stocky. They're very uh, solid animals and they can still weigh up around that 500 kilo mark potentially for a really big robust boy. So the last time we were live with alligators you were feeding them. Why aren't you feeding our alligators today? Well uh, you might feel it if you go outside today. It's a little bit cooler. Um, it's down around in the low 20s, uh, you know, 20, 21, 22 degrees Celsius today. A little bit cooler. We are coming into winter and because these alligators live in a basically a natural naturalistic lagoon where we don't provide any supplemental heating um, they will go through that winter cooling period. Now reptiles are ectothermic, they require uh, the sun's energy basically or heat in order to carry out their daily activities and that includes the digestion of food. If a, a reptile, including an alligator, is in suboptimal conditions like they are during winter, they cannot digest the food if they were to eat it. So there's no point us feeding an alligator in May, June, July August uh, because it's not going to be able to digest that food and it could lead to to some health issues as well So we only feed the alligators when we know that the temperatures are warm and they can uh, Adequately digest that food that they're taking in. Are they strictly carnivores? They are yeah, as I mentioned, there's a lot of variety to the diet um, They'll feed here in captivity on um, a wide array of meat from beef to deer um, we feed them occasionally uh, with rats and mice, um, so rodents. So they eat a wide variety of things, but they are strictly carnivorous, yes. And in the wild, what kind of things do they eat? In the wild, uh, they'd be feeding on slightly different things to what we're feeding them here. Of course, um, we are not going to feed out uh, turtles. We love turtles here at the park, or a reptile park, but in the wild, um, quite a large portion of, of particularly a smaller gator's diet would be turtles. They live in areas that have a lot of different turtle species. They're also going to be feeding on uh, the small native water birds that live in the southern or southeastern part of the United States. Uh, so there's a wide variety of things that they'll be feeding on um, and they probably get a lot more variety in the wild than they would uh, typically in captivity. Can crocodilians breathe underwater? Uh, they cannot. They need to come to the surface to, to take in air and oxygen, um, but they can stay underwater for a very, very long time. Um, I mentioned before when we were feeding Elvis um, a couple of times that he could stay underwater for about three to four hours. The smaller freshwater croc that we have here in Australia, um, it's been documented being underwater on a single dive for over seven hours. So whilst they do need to come to the surface to take a breath, they can stay underwater for a very, very long time. Do they have a good sense of smell? Uh, they do, they do. Um, they've of course got those, those nostrils which you might be able to see right on the end of the snout. And the interesting thing about all crocodilians is everything is located on the top of the head. They're perfectly adapted for living in water. So all this alligator has to do if he wants to hear, see or smell anything with those nostrils, he just pops his head to the surface, it all lays on the same horizontal plane and uh, he can do that. He doesn't need to expose his entire body. He only needs to expose uh, basically the very top of the head and he can do everything that he needs to, include smell. 
So that kind of goes with their camouflage as well. Do you want to just go through how, you know, they do, you know, hide themselves in the wild? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you can see, American alligators are quite dark in colour. They've got a lot of black and dark brown on them. Um, and then as I mentioned, when they're juveniles, they do have a bit of, of yellow on them as well. But as adults, um, they're a very dark animal. We might come a little bit closer and look at this big female uh, sitting here. Now that darker coloration, um, it helps in two ways. One of them is to assist in thermoregulation. If you are darker, um, you're gonna be able to absorb heat more readily than if you are lighter in color. So that darker coloration enables them to absorb heat, meaning they only need to bask for a shorter period of time, but it also enables them to blend in very, very well uh, with the darkish colored water that they're typically living in. Alligators are also interesting in that they will sometimes uh, build uh, basically these little cave systems in the riverbank um, which they can sit up in so they can hide away in uh, a burrow that they make themselves in the riverbank. Uh, so they're very good at hiding and they're very good at concealing themselves um, with that darker body colour and just by utilising the vegetation. We're getting a lot of questions. How many alligators are currently behind you? Uh, well, in terms of the entire lagoon, we have about 30 individuals. Uh, but right now, um, very close to me here, we've just got a few uh, females that might still be a little bit interested in food even though it is a little bit cooler and then as I mentioned many many more uh, out and about if you look over there um, toward the middle of the of the lagoon you can see our feeding ramp where during summer uh, we do a demonstration of, of feeding them off the end of the ramp it's very exciting and during summer when they're far warmer they're very energetic the females will chase us around and they jump up for their food um, and get it off the end of the ramp so it's a pretty exciting thing to watch our alligator feeding um, which occurs during the warmer months all right we might do a last question is it true that you can determine the sex of the eggs and of the babies by the different temperatures yeah yeah one of the interesting things about uh, crocodilian eggs is they are um, well, the gender of the, the offspring is determined by what temperature the egg is incubated at. So in the wild, in a naturally occurring nest, you are going to have fluctuation within the nest from top to bottom. Um, and that gives you that even sex ratio that you'll typically see from a wild clutch. You'll get some boys and some girls. That's ideal for obviously continuing your species. You need both, uh, both sexes. But in captivity, if you wanted to, you could hatch an entire clutch of, say, males by incubating uh, those eggs a little, little bit of a higher temperature and then the females a um, little bit lower so it's it's very dependent on what temperature uh, those eggs are sitting at now we're going to finish up there guys i hope you've enjoyed this um, i hope you have learnt a lot about our american alligators a species that we love and have plenty of here at the park um, we hope to have you back very very soon so you can enjoy these american alligators hope you love them as much as we do um, and i'm going to leave you with this little guy nice up close he's very very cute thank you guys enjoy and we will see you again very very soon bye bye